Uh, yeah, if you really want to turn this week's homework with it, that is fine. I stay for this time. Take it off. Um, looking at where we're headed, we're almost done with the chapter. So yeah, we are fine. slated to have your mastery this Friday. No. So just be aware of that. I, I didn't ask for your permission. Uh, no. We don't have enough time to ask for permission. By the way, for my math art people, just while we're killing time, um, waiting to start up, I am I'm rather proud of this. This is what I've been doing. Uh, not the same, kind of though. Um, I just also like like the color overlapping shadings that kind of happen. Uh, I'm not. I'm sorry. Wait, Ask another board? teacher if you really want the board games class. I've already decided what I'm doing for M term. Right, I'm doing disc golf. Or, yeah, because I'm not really caring about the 932 because we did that on Friday kind of fast with like half of the people here. Um, so hopefully you did that practice, but I'm not worried about the whole 932. If you have it, it's done. You can turn it in. I just don't really care that much. All people shouldn't be allowed to play this. Wait, uh, well, that's you're talking like basketball player tall, which is like seven plus feet. You make it still. Excuse me? <laughs> you make it so nine nine three one. Thank you. You're Thomas, Nine one four nine three one. Is there a demand for you for name on this, please? Not what I said. No, Well, I have just been growing longer, so that's my difference. There is no excuse. Alright, are we ready to start yet? I don't know. I'm always ready to start. Okay, that's not true. Saturday mornings, pretty tough. Alright, so if we had a constant function, three. Now wait, what does it mean by a constant function? Why would we call this function constant? Let's do that. Stop. So it doesn't have any function stop. Does any function stop? It doesn't change. Yes, it yeah, doesn't yeah, have no, any range. Than y or yeah, okay, so give me more. So Chris said it doesn't change at all, there's no difference. What what could we say doesn't like that this is lacking or doesn't impact? What do functions normally have impacting their result? Yeah, an independent variable, right? So for a constant function, nothing is dependent on anything. The value is 3, end of story. Right, sorry, for, for a quadratic function, our inputs obviously matter. And for a linear function, our inputs also matter. So the constant just like y equals 3? Yeah. Yeah, so here, constant function, because now we put it in function notation, we still include the independent variable, c of x, but it doesn't matter. x doesn't get any airtime. No one cares about x. In the constant function. So quadratic function, x squared, and linear function, 2x plus 1. So now we're going to talk about how we could combine these functions. So why don't you play with this for just a minute? with a through d here, how do you think we could add f of x and c of x, or multiply them, or subtract them, or... One must be an x and four. Because it's standalone? Yeah. Why are you looking at the one must be an x and four instead of being engaged? No, I'm just seeing like... Is someone, does somebody not have this page yet? I only printed mine. I think I should have given them all out. So, adding these is pretty straightforward. If I have an x squared, and I go to add 3 with it, while my a of x is just x squared plus 3. Bump, bump. Bump. No, it's not. It's pretty straightforward. 
Now, where things get a little funky is when we multiply our divide functions with each other. So if we do c of x times f of x, well, okay, this is still pretty straightforward because we have monomial monomial, right? 3 and x squared. So we just get that b of x, 3x squared. d of x subtracts c of x from g of x. So if we literally think of writing out 2x plus 1 minus 3, well, oh, okay, we can do that. So we get d of x is 2x minus 2. C of x times g of x. Wunderbar. Now, what? Wunderbar, wonderful, in German. Now, when you have a quadratic that's a trinomial and a linear function that's a binomial, or two quadratics that you're combining with each other, things get a bit goofy. So, be aware, we start with these because they are easy. Right? Don't, don't get yourself um, thinking that they're all easy. It gets a little tricky. So, if we combine a quadratic with a linear, so like x squared, our parent function, quadratic, and 1 half x plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and follow our directions here. Right through that domain of negative 3 to positive 3. And then look at what happens when we add the functions together or subtract one function from the other. And I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this, but I want to give you time to engage with so do we have to do the first two columns? So you have this, right? We want to compare f of x and h of x, their behavior across the domain negative 3 to 3. Oh, the then we're going to look at combining them. So f of x plus h of x or f of x minus h of x. Hmm? Wait, what I have to do? Why is that? So, Satya, you don't need to be using Desmos for this. Your life will be easier if you just solve these values. So, Satya, what's negative 3 squared? Like, you don't need Desmos. Oh, it's not I want to like, add a slider and then a slider. But you're going to make it take too long. We are trying to work all the way through. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, you're completely right. That happens for everyone. No.
Wait, when they add them together, could they like take the four and the point five and add them together? The four and the point five. Okay, so like, on a, I, I where do you have four and point five though? Um, for the negative three value. Of that. No, you don't. You have nine and point five. Yeah, nine. My bad handwriting. Is nine? I know, I need Yeah, to... that's what I've written on your mastery <laughs> before. <laughs> now imagine being not the person who wrote it. So, yes, as such is noticing, we can, when we combine functions and already know the output values, we can just combine the output values. Now, legitimately, if I want to talk about what would j of x be, well, we don't really have any like terms between f of x, f of x and h of x, so we have x squared plus 1 half x plus 1. And if we do f of x minus h of x, we really just have x squared minus 1 half x minus 1. Right? So one has taken your parabola and shifted one way, and the other has gone a different way. You can check your output values here. Now, P of X is where it gets goofy. So I want to give you a little bit of time. You have two graphs on your paper for a reason. P of X should be on your right-hand graph, and it should look weird. Make sure you follow the multiplications and check your signs. I'm not going to show the PLX yet. Oh! Yes! By the way, I think I need to order my own copy of What If. Yeah. Oh, did you enjoy it? I, I have been enjoying it, but I have not had enough time to enjoy it. But I feel bad because it's your book. So I might ask Miss Rosie if she'll order a copy if she can get it in. Wait, what's the book about? Everything. It is serious mathematical solutions to absurd hypothetical questions, or serious scientific okay. answers. Okay. I would have liked the alliteration of serious scientific solutions as opposed to answers. I think they had a missed opportunity there. Um, can I borrow this for one more day and just see if Miss Rosie can get it in? Whether it was is it yours, Chris, or yours? My compressed my compressed seven eight class found it very funny when I put this up on the dot camera, and it was, from what height would you need to drop a steak for it to be cooked when it hit the ground? Yeah, yeah, like, that's what? Oh, it's like a, like, 90 million miles per hour. Does the dot test it for some of Yeah, the answer... There was, like, sagging, and we're like, why is it even asking you how fast they can cook a steak? Hmm? I think that they, like, made it. Well, all right, our p of x output values should be as shown here. And what gets real weird is that p of x is going to look like this up on the TV. Or I'll swap it down here for oh, one that might oh, be playing mm, at home. Mm, mm. Satya, you're in a group of people. Eat your food, then talk. <laughs> And a chew, and a chew, and a chew, and a chew. Swallow and speak. <laughs> that's really condescending. You, that, that's what? I can't hear you because you're talking with a mouthful of food. Did you say condescending? Why? <laughs> he said condescending. Why does this look like this? When we multiply the functions together, what does it turn into? Two. A month. It is a cubic. So cubic functions actually have what we might need on the state test. Cubic equations or cubic um, relationships have then what we call a relative minimum and a relative maximum. Okay, I need you to be like listening right now because this might end up on the test. The relative maximum would be the highest point of the upward moving parabola that then still comes back down. 
And likewise, the relative minimum would be the lowest point of the parabola <clears throat> as it is on its way down and then back up. Obviously, this is relative because there's values lower out here and relative because there's values higher out here. But we will use these points to indicate certain special traits that we don't care about yet. It you can only take so much learning at one. So, are we comfortable with how we combine the functions, whether through addition or multiplication? Why are you, you're going to lunch after this. You're eating like a sandwich. Put the lid on that. You're done. You're going to lunch after this. I don't care when kids have snacks, but you're eating your lunch right now. All right, Jacob, going skiing. Woohoo! Woo! So, Jacob notices. <coughs> I think Jacob's very good. Jacob notices that at his favorite ski park, they've changed from a straight slanted slope to a curved hill. Right? Which makes sense because we can get a launch and then nice gentle landing, hopefully, or we'll, you know, skip off the top of the hill and tumble to our demise. <laughs> so, he takes a picture of the jump and the landing hill with his phone, and then he applies a little bit of mathy aptness and figures out these numbers. <laughs> yeah, How would you do that? Jacob is a little extra. So, he throws it in Desmos, and we end up with Right, so we should be able to, utilizing something we know, and uh, there's some input values here that he's already set up for us. We now, Satya, is when we get to work with Demos. Yeah, but now it's not working. <laughs> Wait, when I put the accessibility thing That's not what you're trying to click. You're trying to click this, didn't oh. you? So, I'm going to leave you guys at it to try to figure out these situations. Oh, it just, it broke. Desmos broke. Something. Poor Desmos. It had so much to it. Nope. Oh, it, it pops up like this. We have to plug stuff in. We have to figure out the equations. This is so we can test what we think. No, it says, um, oh yeah. So, we're using this point, this path, and assuming it's parabolic, In some form or another. Don't know if any of this is Don't so ignore the jumper right now. We're looking at the hill. I only put this off here so we have both to work with. Um, Mr. Watson. So um, I typed on it in graphing form, and I got the vertex to be 22.3, but I think it's 100. But what, what I think to get to 100. So in graphing form, you said you typed in what? Um, so negative X minus 22. Square. 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 
So, sorry, what was your follow-up question then? How do you what? I think, yeah, Stephen, David said he wanted it to be wider. What what other thing are we trying to make happen? Make it Oh, I got it. No, I did it. We are trying to make happen when we input 100, we output zero, right? So once we get here, this gives us the right vertex, but not necessarily the right equation. So we can now, actually I should put a question mark on this. Hmm, what should I do then? I guess check. I know something else I can use. Uh, you want max well, max 45. Negative. 45 is before. Well, we know what we have to do. Well, zero equals. Zero equals. Our equation has to be negative. Negative. Yeah. Right? That's what they told me. I'm just following what they told me. So, wait, we can move this over. We can say negative 43 equals well, the opposite of 100 minus, you said 78. Oh, there's our 78 there. Distance between. Squared. Picture up of 84. That's 43. That's 643. Google is not the right number. 78 Okay, I'm going to step back for a minute. Process through it. You guys got each other. So, Mr. Hudson, would we apply the negative to the parentheses before we apply the uh, exponential or? I don't know, man. You guys tell me. Is is what I wrote up there gonna work? I think we can try and force it to work. So no, wait, 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 wait. If I add or subtract something to that equation because we said that's wrong, that moves my vertex. So we gotta like multiply. Ah, we need a multiplier. So we're not looking for addition subtraction. We're looking for what goes here? The A. We're trying to figure out what A value will make this work. Well, we have I can't find any uh, negative forty three. Hold on. <laughs> equals negative a times what was 78 squared? 6084. How do we solve for what a is? We divide and do the division. So this might have actually been written slightly <laughs> wrong. No, but then the A is this, negative. Yeah, so here I wouldn't I actually four. have negative A. I would just have A written. Oh, that's funny. Uh, 23 right. is the only here number that Here we would just have, so that, sorry, right, easier this way. This would be just regular A. Because when we're working to do the algebra, just analyze what you have before you move on. Say, oh, my multiplier needs to be negative because my parabola is upside down. So technically, and I forget what decimal they give us in the book. Uh, nope, sorry. That's math 3. Or CC3. Um, negative 0 0.0071. Should shift that a little bit, I guess. So there's what they give us. Now if we move back to our skier. Our skier. I'm going to let you guys keep going. 
We got 20 minutes of class left. I'm gonna hands off for a couple. Quick question on the skier, or the skier thing. Would the are we? I mean, are we thinking about well, the part of part of the skier? Wait. So are we? What? What is? What is Jay about? You guys should have textbooks out. question where are we trying to get the, the jump part of it to graph also no you're just trying to look, graph the flight path so that's not okay so I'll graph the flight the path in the to the vertex I mean the, the zero off would be 100 So you gotta solve it the same way that we did in the first thing to find out the A value. Is that the A value? Maybe. 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 We can't really do it in the same way because no. we don't have that is not the that don't is have the that is not it, Chief. <laughs> Mr. Hudson, how did you solve for the A value again? Talk to your class. You guys, you guys are already trying to, oh, I'm trying to solve the problem with these. Are you trying to get too long? Put it in graphing for Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. Here. 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 Do we do 40 equals a No, like, he solved the algebra. Yeah. This yeah. square plus yeah. 45. Yeah, this is 100. This is 100. This is 100. That would be. Hmm? If we did 40 equals a zero minus. 100 minus 24 squared plus 45. Oh, it would be zero, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that would be a good one. Okay, so like A negative 24. That's the zero value. So, analyze this. Will the path of the hill be the same parabola as the path, the flight path of the ski? No. No, we can see that, right? They are separate parabolas. So J of X is only going to hold true until the skier hits the hill, and then their path changes, right? So the reason the skier's flight path is parabolic is gravity. Like, this would be true, right? If we actually analyzed a ski jump, it would be a parabolic path. So the two points we have to work with that we want to use are the 0, 040 and the 2445. We want to start with vertex form. So J of X in vertex form, we're going to go ahead because we're smarter this time and put the A there before we write it in graphing form. X minus 24, minus 24 squared plus 45. Plus 45. Plus 45. Right. I think I got it. I think yes, I do too. What is it? I think I got it. Then five, what do I do? Five, hey, I don't want the five, answer. I want what do we do? Um, put x in for y. You put zero in for x. Put zero in for x, k, and forty, right? Because if x is going to be zero, that's going to be forty. So negative twenty-four squared plus forty. Oh, well, I could subtract forty-five from both sides, right? Wait, what do you? What do you want? The other side of you one hundred. And then why 100, Sati? I think you were zoned out when I talked about why we're not using 100. And then 24. Yeah, I was trying to figure out. Okay, so I'm not repeating myself. Figure out why not. That or ask your classmate. Wouldn't go down to Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's 
when you finish it, it's a is negative point zero zero yeah, eight five five times. I so did this it. is five seventy six. Yeah, I did it a different way. Okay. Can I show? Well, I'll give me two seconds to finish this. It's five a is either two. that or whatever decimal represents that. Yeah. Do you want me to clear the ink off here, Jacob? Uh, sure. Because I can do that really easy. Like that's why I'm awesome. Wait, negative five over five seventy six. Yeah. That's I might have read that wrong. But All right, Jacob, the floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I went from the age. Can you please take over? How do you do that? Speech one. That's all the good. Oh, I can try. I factored it out. So I did. <laughs> and you did. Square. Or minus. We have limited board space. Mm -hmm. And then since I knew the y intercept was um, 40, I knew that this would have to end up as negative 5. So then the a value would have to um, be negative 5 over 576. Yeah, this would have to be negative 5 when the a is factored in. Because then when you add negative 5 to so, 45, you get the y. I'm so with you, with you on what you did. But if that doesn't make sense, you don't need to take that path, right? Take whatever this path. Is what I thought of. No, you're good. I get what you're doing. So he, well, and you kind of said the wrong thing. You said you factored it. You expanded. You actually squared it. So you didn't factor it. You squared it. So his square of x minus 24 is x squared minus 48x plus 576, which is the same thing that we just found here, except... Then this plus 45, right? So it's still the same thing. But then he just takes a different route of forcing it to be true. Right. Now, this also, this is messing me up because it looks like an equal. Yeah, this is so. just the function side, not anything that it's equal to. So we would also equal this to our mm -hmm. function value. Sweet. Any questions remaining on that one? No. One last thing to think about. And then there's the multiplied and together. If we want to know the real deal about the three enclosures with the negative beastie boys, no. the what? there's a beastie boy <laughs> song that starts with if you want to know the real deal about the three tell your worship will tell the wall and something something. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Estes, none of these kids know the beastie boys, and it makes me sad. We know what they are. I mean, my mom, they're that one really old white rap group. Yeah, that one. Wait, do you mean... Uh, oh, no, I'm trying to think of another white rap group, but that's kind of hard to think about. All right. You want to wrap this up so we can do practice? Yeah. <laughs> I started with if you want to know, and then my brain went into the Beastie Boys song, and that's where we are. All right, so... Let's just, if you got a moment? You curious what we're doing? What are we trying... Science class. If we're trying to figure out the skier's height above the hill, what math would need to be done? Because we've got both graphs now, right? We've got the, the parabolic equation for the hill. We've got the equation for the skiers. What do we do? Yeah. What, if we wanted a function that represented the distance between the skier and the hill? Oh, well, that's the thing. Um, that's most of the we subtract, them. we subtract them. Right? We are talking about difference. So we want to take our hill function. And we call it, yeah, H of X. We call it hill function H of X. Skier function with J of X. If we subtract them from each other, we'll call that F of X. Thing. Whoa. It's the thing. That's the thing. That makes so much. That makes so many. Now hold up. Last challenge I have for you today. 
figure out at when, what x value, does the skier make contact with the hill? Because no, no, but, the this is on you, not on me. You got eight minutes. What is the question? Figure out where up on the TV is I know. Yeah, this I know. point. Where the skier makes contact with the hill. Yeah, but there's also another way too. Yeah, sixty nine point two nine four. Another way to figure it out is where that is in the Ah, so Thomas is saying we could use f of x being zero. Yeah, just find the zero. Why, Thomas? What does that represent? That represents when they are moved. There's no yeah, difference. there's no difference in their height. So you just find the zero. So the zero are in 69.24. That's the only logical answer. I think they're starting to see how this can relate to their future careers of like using function modeling and stuff like that. No, no, no. Never, 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 never. Yeah, I'm not going to be the ever out of the function. You're not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be. So wait, before we can do this, we gotta clarify what is f of x. So wait, who can tell me what you found for your f of x? Wait, what? Your f of x, the difference function. What was that? Just the two equations. What is it? You gotta you type it out. Oh, I just wrote k of x minus a. Because you're in decimals. Okay, so okay, so now we're putting in. I would have liked to keep that equation up there too. Okay, I can write that. Did you not write it down? No, I didn't write it down. Where is it? I should have. So our equation is negative 5 over 576. Now we could work in decimals here. It's not better. It's much, much worse. I'm going to cheat because I can. That is not how rude. Not really. It's going to help you guys. So, here you go. Up on the TV. If approximately, and I don't like how this zooms, our h of x coefficient is about 71 ten thousandths, right, compared to 87 ten thousandths. I will make your life easy because we're running out of time. If we do the difference between them, oh, they might not have it in the answer key either. Yes. <laughs> Satya, what'd you get for your answer? Oh, uh, when it when they're going different? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was 69.7. Hold on. Yeah, 29. Absolutely. Good work. So, I would be upset about you just using technology for that, except you can use Desmos on the test. You can? So, when you are faced with questions like this, Desmos is the official graphing tool of the state of Ohio. So, Ohio has adopted Desmos into the state test. So on state test, I can have not on every question, but on certain questions. If it asks you to do something like this, you would probably have access to Desmos. Yes. Yay. So if you are comfortable with the algebra, use your scrap paper, write it out, do that. If you're comfortable with Desmos, use your graphing utility. Whatever you're comfortable with. So we should get right about sixty nine. Well, I know how to do it. Uh, it, so I think it has everything. I think it does have an extension in Chrome, um, but Desmos itself is just a website. So it makes it so like I think they have the app version, but really, where like what they would have on the state test would just be this, and then they would start typing in like, okay, so my function f of x is da da da, and then we can do math. Because instead of having to like figure out both equations and multiply, just yeah. Um, anything else that we need to cover? That's not you guys, this is you guys. Um, I think we're good. Alright guys, you got like three or four minutes, you can work on your homework. I cannot send you to lunch yet. So you can go ahead and start to practice. Oh yeah, I forgot. Clocks are on one time. Phoenix kind of weird. It happens.